Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video we got a couple of very, very interesting bodybuilding stories. The first one is actually like a physique update of Ramon Dino and Mike Sommerfeld. These two guys are posing together at three weeks out of Mr. Olympia. And what we see here is, I mean, I'm honestly very surprised that Ramon is actually looking this much better than Mike. That he's actually this much bigger and that he's this much leaner as well. It's a night and day difference. And I believe last year Mike actually took fourth at a Mr. Olympia while Ramon was second. Is that going to be the case this year as well? I mean, after seeing all the physique updates, all the photos from Mike, I thought this guy could have like switched to the open how big he looked in the offseason. And even now, that he's prepping, like in his photos, he looks crazy good. But now, after seeing him next to Ramon Dino, and guys, Wesley Vissers is a lot bigger than Ramon Dino, and so is Chris Bumstead. I mean, I thought Mike was bigger than this, but like he got completely dwarfed. He got completely smoked by Ramon here. Again, not just with size, but with conditioning as well. I don't know how conditioned Mike will be for the Mr. Olympia, but like Ramon is ahead. Like he is quite a bit ahead. Check out his chest striations. Ramon is already freaking ripped and shredded and like big as well. And Mike is definitely behind. Behind Ramon. I'm not saying he can't get in condition in three weeks. All I'm saying is Ramon is right now basically, I mean, stage ready. Like he doesn't need to get much leaner than this, really. So I would say Ramon is just ahead. Like he's definitely contest ready basically at this point. And Mike is, you know, three weeks out. He can get condition. He can get more condition in those three weeks, but like, uh, is he gonna be on the same level of conditioning like Ramon in those three weeks? I don't know, we'll see, but the thing that I was more surprised with is the size difference. Again, I thought Mike was huge, I thought he was much bigger than this, but, you know, he's actually a lot shorter than Ramon, so he's a, he's a very short guy, and so if he switched to the, to the bodybuilding, it would definitely be 212, so not open. I don't know what his weight is right now, but he's definitely significantly smaller than Ramon, and definitely not as big as I thought he would be, based on his uh, photos, where he's uh, standing alone. Now, if you don't believe me, you can go to his Instagram and check out his recent photos, but if you do that, you will see a ton of comments uh, like this one. Here this guy says, Sibam pays his graphic designers, no way you're going to beat him with... Uh, I don't want to curse, so let's say uh, poop morals. You're going to be confused if you see all these comments. What do they actually mean? They're all saying the same thing, basically 300 $300 made, do better, 300 I'm here for the hate. Is it possible for you to stop stealing from graphic designers? Is it possible for you to stop photoshopping your photos? Give the money. And here you can see the hashtag Goob. And you guys probably know who Goob is. He's basically calling out everybody if they're doing something wrong, if they're photoshopping their photos, or they're scamming somebody, or they're doing anything that is uh, morally wrong. And basically, he caught uh, Mike uh, photoshopping his photos. Yeah. And also, some graphic designer did a design for him, and Mike decided not to pay $300 and use the design. And so now Goob's army of people are commenting on all of his photos, they're spamming him like crazy. And this is what happens when you are not uh, doing things right. So whoever is watching this, better be careful, because if you're trying to trick people, it's gonna be out there. I mean, I don't know the whole situation, I just know, I just saw what Goob posted, you can go to his account and, and check it out. I'm not gonna play it here, but yeah, that's what his comments mean, in case you were wondering. Next up, we got some photos from Andrew Jack. It's not really a physique update. You know, you're gonna see what else do I got, but there are a couple of photos like this one in which Andrew Jack is looking, I would say, bigger than the last time we saw him on stage, than a Texas Pro. I don't know if he grew even more, but he is looking incredibly freaky, super, super big. And before we take a look at Andrew Jack and what he looks like right now, I gotta tell you one story as well. One of my close friends was in Dubai and he was getting a haircut and he saw Andrew Jack at the same uh, place and he took a photo with him, you know, shook his hand. And after his haircut was done, when he wanted to pay, the, the barber actually told him that Andrew Jack covered his bill. 
I don't know how expensive barbers are in Dubai, but I'm sure it's not cheap, everything is expensive over there. And the guy was a total stranger to Andrew Jack, I mean, he's a bodybuilder, a classic physique amateur bodybuilder, uh, but yeah, they just met and Andrew Jack decided to, you know, just be a nice guy and he paid for the bill. What a nice guy, man, I mean, he did that not for attention, he just wanted to do something nice, and he didn't know that this guy was my friend, so now at least 10,000 people are gonna hear about this. What a nice guy Andrew Jack is. Uh, be like him, don't be like Mike Sommerfeld. Anyways, as far as his physique right now, it's looking phenomenal. I mean, he's looking massive, like super massive. Look at his arm right here in the shoulder and the chest. Like he's, he's large, like right now he's crazy big. I don't know if he was the same size before the Texas Pro, or is he going to bring even more freak factor, more size to the Mr. Olympia? Because I'm looking at his photos and I'm thinking, he does look like bigger and fuller, if that's possible. I mean, he does look super, super freaky. This is insane. Now, if we are talking about where he's going to place at the Mr. Olympia, I mean, he was fifth last year, but he is most likely going to beat Brandon Curry. Would that put him in fourth? Well, Nick is in the mix now. Nick beat Andrew Jack at the Arnold Classic, and that wasn't Nick at his best, and Andrew was spot on at that show, but he progressed a lot since then. So, that's gonna be an interesting battle, Nick versus Andrew, two completely different physiques, Nick who is definitely like more complete in poses, but Andrew he has a lot of wow factor and like very good aesthetics and like a lot of size and height and everything who's going to kill Nick in all the front shots I'm sure but like from the side and from the back it's gonna be a different a different story for sure so I don't know who's gonna place higher I'm sure Andrew is going to be most likely in the top five maybe fourth and if there is anybody who can potentially challenge him and like push him out of the top five, in my opinion, that is Martin Fitzwater. And that has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that he is sponsored by Hostile and that I'm sponsored by Hostile. The whole point of my channel is to be brutally honest and I'm always going to be. And nobody can tell me what to say and what not to say. Fuad is not paying me that much money, guys. Like, it's just a little bit of a bump. I barely even have any contact, direct contact with him. So, like, that's... Guys, stop the conspiracy theories and some of you are saying that i'm like hating on andrew jack because i don't even know why because he had some issue with ford back like three years ago guys come on that's not the case and i'm not even hating on andrew jack i never i never hated on the guy like i'm saying he's going to be top five maybe even top four worst case scenario sixth because I believe there is a possibility of Martin defeating him, taking him out of that top five. I can see that as a possibility. I'm not gonna just stay silent because some of you will think that I'm saying that because he's part of the hostile. No, I actually think that's a possibility because two years ago at a Texas Pro, in my opinion, Martin beat Andrew Jack from the back and maybe even from the side. As you can see in the back double bicep, he definitely beat him. I mean, Andrew Jack came up a lot. His back is definitely much bigger. But so did Martin. Martin is a different bodybuilder in 2024. And Andrew still doesn't have the details in the glutes and the hamstrings. And who the hell knows if Andrew is going to be on at the Mr. Olympia. He was always off so far. So from the side and from the back, Martin can push this guy. He can challenge him for sure. From the front, no chance. No chance in hell. I don't know if there is anybody who can actually challenge uh, Andrew Jack from the front, but that's only like three poses. The rest, I don't think there is a chance of Hunter beating Andrew Jack or of Brandon Curry doing that. If anybody can do it, it's only Martin Fitzwater. It's most likely not gonna happen, but if anybody can do it, it's Martin. Again, Andrew Jack is like insane from the front. You know, his front shots are probably the best in the world right now. But those side shots, the thickness, the lack of thickness from the side, and also the back shots, not the back itself. His back is fine. His back is actually very good. But like the lack of details and the conditioning in the hamstrings, in the glutes, the lack of development in the hamstrings, he definitely has a lot of glaring flaws. And that's gonna prevent him from placing as high as he would if he was more complete. But, I mean, I don't know, maybe he's gonna surprise me as well, I just don't think, you know, he's complete enough to be higher than uh, top 4 this year, again, most likely 4th or 5th, 
And that's if he brings conditioning, which he basically never brought to the, to the Mr. Olympia stage. Is he going to do it this year? Let's hope he does. We'll see if he does. If he does, most likely fourth or fifth. Now, as far as him placing a fourth, he would have to beat uh, Nick Walker. Um, I think my waist is going to be a lot more tapered this year. Um, and I think my quads have come up a good bit. All right, so you heard Nick. Are we going to trust him or like wait and verify for ourselves on the Mr. Olympia stage? I mean, we got this uh, physique update, sort of, a leg update, which is basically the only thing that we care about as far as his muscularity. Did he bring up those quads? And here I am saying that uh, Nick is most likely going to place ahead of Anderjack, but should I be hating on Nick as well because he had an issue with Fuad? <laughs> I'm pretty sure Nick had a bigger issue with Fuad, like he was sponsored by the Hostile for a short time and he got out of the contract, got out of, got out of the podcast as well, and I don't know if he's on speaking terms with Fuad even. And Androject, I mean, he had an issue with Fuad not saying that he's going to win the Mr. Olympia, something like that. You know, saying that he's not ready to, to win the Mr. Olympia yet. I mean, that, if, that's a, if that's an issue and the reason for Fuad to uh, tell me to hate on him, then I don't know, man. There is no zero truth in that. I mean, uh, as far as Nick Walker right now, you guys know that I was always a huge fan of Nick, and I still am. And yeah, I know he also has a lot of flaws, especially structural flaws, and like, yeah, with the quads as well. However, in this physique update, it seems like his legs may have come up a bit. Though he does say this is after doing leg extensions, and I believe that's his last exercise of his workout. So, he's fully pumped, and that's why his legs are looking this big. There are no separations in his legs because of that, they're fully pumped. But I feel like they may have come up. I don't remember his legs looking like this before, even with the pump. And he says in that Q&A that he thinks he made progress mainly in his quads and in the size of his waist. He is not showing us his waist, but even if he did, like sometimes he makes it look smaller in his selfies, in his mirror selfies with his shorts pull way too down, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But uh, right here, you know, even though we can't see his waist, we gotta take his word for it. And I believe his waist is going to be smaller. I believe he's that dedicated, that serious about this, that he is going to give all his gut to make it happen, to make the waist smaller, to get super, super conditioned. And this guy puts on muscle like nobody else, really. So I believe if he really puts his mind into growing the quads, his quads are going to grow. They're going to get bigger. And if his quads are bigger and his waist is smaller, if he is super conditioned and he controls his midsection the whole time on the stage, I mean, he can do really well. Not just fourth. I can even see, I can even see him placing higher. Like third or second even. We're gonna talk about that further and more, I'm gonna make a prediction video, we'll see when I'm gonna put Nick, but I have high hopes from this guy actually, even after his disappointing showing at the New York Pro, I think he can improve significantly and surprise everybody at the Mr. Olympia. Whatever you guys think, make sure to let me know down below in the comment section, if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, for more content like this guys, stay tuned, subscribe to this channel, thank you so much for watching, see you soon, all the best and bye bye.